to chase down a, an old, well, it's an old railroad, but most of it's still there. Okay. It's the Union Pacific. Oh, of course. It's America's <laughs> biggest railroad, I think. Oh, okay. But this is their old original main line, the Transcontinental, that ended with the Golden Spike. Right. And uh, that line still runs through Weber Canyon, which we're going to drive up from oh, Ogden. Oh, wow. But at uh, Echo, there used to be a branch line that broke off right there and went over to Park City. And uh, the Park City local, also known as the Park City Peddler, used to go up there. The peddlers that have pedals? That's up all the way, right? Well, it's so slow, it might as well have. <laughs> okay. no, I, I, I'm pretty sure they would refer to those as peddlers because they went door to door. Oh, that kind of peddler. That kind of peddler. <laughs> But the, the, the little local trains, which are the most interesting for modelers, because they stop all over the place. They go to this industry and they drop something off, and they go to this industry and they pick something up. Oh. And uh, the railroads hated that kind of business because okay. it was much more profitable to just pick up a train in Denver and deliver it to San Francisco. Aww. But um, the little locals, they were always looking for some way to close those down. Well, they finally yeah. closed down the Park City branch. Uh, so we're going to go look for the Park City branch line. And we've got this footage uh, that these guys shot, though, the guys from Ogden uh, rode that last uh, local train and they shot it all on some like VHS video or something. It doesn't really? look very good, but it, it, it's neat to see the last right. Park City local wow. on the line just before it was ripped up. That's cool. And so let's go see what's left in line. Okay, let's do Back in 1989, the Utah Railway Museum here in Ogden was just kind of getting started. At that same time, the Park City branch of the Union Pacific was also about to be abandoned. So some of the museum guys got some funding together and shot this footage of the last runs of the Park City local, in this particular case departing right from the depot there in Ogden. There were only two customers left on the line at the end, a lumber yard that was getting about five flat cars of lumber a year delivered to them, but a big phosphate facility up there. They were bringing phosphate down and delivering it to the smelter at Garfield, where Kennecott was generating a massive amount of sulfuric acid from their pollution scrubbers. These would be mixed together and turned into fertilizer. They're using these little Jeep 30s to run the train. So we started our adventure in the same yard and look what we ran into, number 804. This is another one of those Jeep 30s that was used on the Park City Local. They're now being used for switching duty here in Ogden. The last locals were pulled by 805 and here we are looking at 804. Ogden is a nifty little town. It sort of feels like a northeastern industrial town somehow transplanted into Utah. A lot of old railroad artifacts around here. The Transcontinental Railroad came through here in 1868 and 1869 and it turned into a significant railroad hub, the division point between the SP and the UP. Even though the SP and the UP are now simply the UP, it's still an important hub on the UP. However, a lot of the facilities have been abandoned. The UP maintained incredible shops here. If you remember from last week's show, that was an HO model of the Ogden Roundhouse here. All of the locomotive shopping is done somewhere else, much easier to keep that localized somewhere. But they do use Ogden as a storage facility for a lot of their equipment. Check out all of these Dash 8s. I counted three dozen Dash 8s in open storage here. Not sure why they're not being used. There's probably some weird corporate intrigue going on. Well, the Park City local left from Ogden here and proceeded immediately up Weber Canyon. The entrance to the canyon is just right near the throat of the yards there at Riverdale. Well, some of the old original line from 1869 has been abandoned and moved somewhere else. This is, in fact, the original grading from 1869 when the Transcontinental Railroad came through. 
course it was single track back then and as you can see it's now double track. It's also one of the busiest main lines in America. It's a spectacular canyon and very, very photogenic. Uh, many a steam excursion has been filmed here. And as it happens, 844 is coming back in just a few weeks. And yeah, we're going to be chasing it up through Weber Canyon here. Unless, of course, some other significant screwing around comes up and takes us somewhere else. You just never know about these things. Uh, screwing around always takes precedent over screwing around. And of course, for the last few runs of the Park City Local, the guys from the Ogden Museum shot here as well. It's a beautiful, beautiful canyon, and at the top of Weber Canyon, it makes a bend into Echo Canyon, here at the little community of Echo. I love, I love the outhouse over here. Outhouse or an in-house? <laughs> in-house. <A> cranny. <laughs> cranny. Egyptian tombs? Oh my the gosh. Egyptian tombs. Serious? I um, doubt it very much. Well, there's a cemetery right there, the Egyptian tombs. Echo Historical Cemetery. Egyptian tombs. Cemetery Road. Uh -huh. I think most towns have a cemetery road. They do. This is just so cool. That is a neat. The Echo Historic Church. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that it is. That they it is. open it to the public at times. Wow. Those steps are steep. That's Rock cool. formations here and everything are just so darn cool. They are. I love Echo Canyon. Yeah. It's just a beautiful place. It is. People that live here are lucky. Yeah. They have a scenic vista out every window. And great railroad history. And great railroad history. Yeah. While the Park City local quite often consisted of just five or six cars, sometimes it would consist of as many as 30 cars. There was a lot of business coming down the mountain in phosphate. Here at Echo, they would head up the Park City branch. was important to close the switch behind you before you left. Uh, first of all, that uh, involves getting clear of the switch so that you can actually, you know, close the switch behind you. Oh, uh, there we go. There are only a few hundred feet left of the old Park City branch, and oddly enough, it still has some phosphate cars parked on it. But right here, the tracks end, and all that remains from here on is grade. When Interstate 80 was built, they had to build this bridge over it. The bridge remains, but no tracks. There's an amazing history to this branch. It was laid by several different companies as a narrow gauge line. They were trying to get coal into Salt Lake City and there was some coal discovered here at the appropriately named village of Coalville. But there were some weird corporate intrigues trying to get the coal to Salt Lake City. At this point, the tracks crossed over the old Lincoln Highway really nifty bridge here. Notice that the grade has been turned into a trail. Some of it is paved, most of it is not. They've done such a thorough job of reclaiming the area that walking the grade you can't find spikes or anything. All we found were some cinders. It's only a few miles from here over to Colville, maybe four miles. And it was the coal here at Colville that they were initially after in building this line. But the only supplier of coal to Salt Lake City was the Union Pacific out of their own mines in Wyoming. So they weren't too keen on somebody opening up new mines here at Colville. So the narrow gauge railroads building here all realized that if they built over to Echo, Union Pacific could charge them anything they wanted to haul the coal to Salt Lake City. So instead of going the few miles over to the UP, they decided to go 40 miles through the mountains directly to Salt Lake City. They never did complete that line. They did make it as far as Park City, just about the same time that silver was discovered in Park City.
What a bridge. That's neat. Wow. That's old. That's old. <laughs> They're really doing a lot of cool stuff. Like they are. Motorcycle park over there, like a motocross right. park. Trails and campground going down. Mm -hmm. Making me so good. Jersey so. barrier. The more things change, the more they change. Right, they do. The railroad's gone, but a lot of neat things come I just in. can't believe the railroad's gone. Yeah, I've been through here years ago, but I can't the railroad was gone. Yeah. Wow. Well, go figure. Somewhere right up here is Rockport, right? Yes. Oh, it's just there. I see it. There yeah. is Rockport. Rockport or Reservoir. the little village below Rockport. Uh, Rockport is, of course, gone. Yeah. Because it's under <laughs> under the reservoir. Under the reservoir. <laughs> Rockport's actually the little village that Sorensen came and got to use for Pioneer Village. Oh, that's right. The bulk of Pioneer Village right. uh, was Rockport, up the little canyon over here, which is wow. now underneath Wanship Reservoir. Right. Between Wanship and Park City, the tracks went up this little canyon. Later on, when the Lincoln Highway was built, it too went up the canyon parallel in the tracks. And when Interstate 80 replaced the Lincoln Highway, it, well, the tracks ended up in the median between the two sides of the freeway. The final iteration of the narrow gauge railroad that came through here was the Utah Eastern, and after the mineral discoveries in Park City, the Union Pacific simply figured out a way to take that railroad over and relay it as a standard gauge line. And they certainly had no interest in building the line all the way to Salt Lake City. I mean, why? They already had trackage down Weber Canyon through Ogden to Salt Lake City. And this maintained their coal monopoly and kept them very, very, very happy. The phosphate that was being picked up here in Park City at the end of the line wasn't being mined at Park City. It was actually being mined clear over in Vernal, but there was no railhead anywhere near Vernal, so the phosphate was being trucked to this location near Park City and then offloaded at a tipple and reloaded into train cars for delivery down to the smelter, the Kennecott smelter in Garfield. The fertilizer plant has been relocated to Rock Springs, Wyoming, and it's no longer at the smelter. The sulfuric acid is being taken by train to Rock Springs, and the phosphate is moving through a slurry pipeline from Vernal to Rock Springs. There was a lot of hope of keeping this line alive as a scenic railroad. Interestingly enough, this location right here is only a few miles from an abandoned grade that connected to what is now the Heber Creeper. And if that gap could have been closed and all of that track relayed, this entire line would then be connected to the Heber Creeper. And the Heber Creeper could have operated all the way to Colville on this absolutely beautiful line but it just proved to be too expensive and impractical and so in 1989 the line was abandoned and the track torn up. While Park City was always a mining and mineral hub, these days it is a tourist destination and I don't think any of the mines are still in operation. All of the phosphate facility here was torn down and the land all reclaimed and it is now an absolutely beautiful spot. Interestingly, the Union Pacific did run a ski train for a brief period between Ogden and Park City, but like a lot of things, for some reason, it just never really panned out. <sighs> Well, that was a fun day. Yeah, it was. Chasing railroad. Right? Oh my gosh. You know, and I feel so sad that I did not know that that railroad had been discontinued. I was like, when did that happen? Yeah. Well, the weird thing is, it's just been there our whole lives, and you're just used to it being there. It's yeah. a fixture. Well, I haven't been to Evanston in a long time since my family doesn't live there anymore. and. 
I hadn't been there in a long time. It just never occurred to me that line wasn't running anymore. Well, I was deeply involved in, in trying to keep it from being abandoned. There was all that talk about right. turning it into a scenic railroad or right. even moving the Heber Creeper over there, which right. I didn't see was ever going to happen. No, but what a magnificent uh, scenic railroad it would have made going from oh, exactly see. where we're sitting right now yeah, imagine. to Colville. Right. Oh. I mean, I love Colville in that area up there. Anyway, Echo Canyon and oh, and man. Park City is such a magnificent resort town. Right. The idea that there would be a scenic railroad, can, uh, anyway, it got torn up and it's yeah, gone. Now and it's a trail. Now it's a bike trail, yeah. so such is life. Oh, no kidding. But right here, this was the switching yard. I, yeah, right, we're sitting in the switching yard. UP Depot is right here, still there. It's a lovely restaurant now. Yeah. And the Rio Grande Depot is right over here, right. what's left of it. <laughs> the passenger depot got uh, sort of burned down, but the freight depot is still there. <laughs> And, uh, but this is it. This is the this switching is, yard. This yeah, was end of track amazing. right here. Wow. The tracks ended just a few feet right over there. My goodness. Not anymore. Now no. they end clear down in Echo. Yes. Wow. There you have it. Well, yeah. anyway, if you haven't been over to the channel, do pop over to the channel. And you want to subscribe because Absolutely. it's so cool being a subscriber and you can brag to your friends that you're a subscriber right. and all sorts of things. Come along with us. It just makes you so cool. And, and of course, <laughs> if you work your notifications right in the little notifications gear logo thing, then it will send you a, a text message or an oh, email yeah. or however you want to be alerted every time we upload, upload? Oh, upload <laughs> some tomfoolery. <laughs> No, they just pulled a green off. Just pulled a green off. What the heck? <laughs> I'm just sure that that's really the best stuff. Anyway, I, I digress. But if you want to get over to the channel and you want to subscribe, the easy way to do that is to click the blue button. Zoing. You see the blue button? We can't see it because it's virtual. But it's right there. It says subscribe. Click on that. It takes you to the channel. Makes you a subscriber. Yeah, do it. Too cool. Good. <laughs> anyway, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. Dinner is here. Say what? <laughs> but we will see you here again in one week with some more massive screwing around. See you then. Bye bye. Bye.